Here, fishy, fishy. No, Nicole, nice I wouldn't. <laughs> no! <laughs> Did that fish just scream at them? <laughs> What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Yes, it's movie time on the channel again and there were so many of you that wanted me to do this particular film. It is of course the sequel to 47 meters down, 47 meters down uncaged. Why didn't they just call it 48 meters down. But if you missed the Shark Bites movie commentary we did on the first film, make sure you click this link here and give it a watch. 47 meters down, Uncaged has some pretty terrible critics reviews on Rotten Tomatoes at 45%, but the audience score actually isn't that bad, which is slightly strange because all I ever seem to hear is how bad this movie is. It doesn't start anyone of any real note in my opinion, but it does feature Sylvester Stallone's daughter, Sistine Stallone. Sylvester and Sistine. <laughs> Come on, man. I am somewhat looking forward to getting stuck into this one from a shark science perspective, though. I saw the film a few years ago, although I don't really remember it particularly well, but from what I can remember, the shark stuff was pretty bad. <laughs> Before we start the episode today, though, do you enjoy the Shark Bites movie commentaries? If so, make sure you hit that like button below and comment as well. You at home liking and commenting on these videos makes a big difference to the channel, and it helps me out loads. So if you enjoy the movie commentaries and you want to keep seeing more of them on the channel, make sure you like and comment. It's really appreciated by me. Also, I'd like to just give a really quick shout out to the players, coaches and staff of Falmer Town Football Club. Falmer Town recently became league champions down here in Cornwall for the first time in 22 years alongside winning the Cornwall Senior Cup for the 13th time. The fans and players had an amazing time celebrating the double together. Look, here's me bouncing around having a great time. <laughs> Anyway, lads, well done. And as such, today's movie commentary is dedicated to you. Oh yeah, some Shark Bites advice though for you today. Make sure you're watching this movie commentary with the lights turned off because this film is ridiculously dark. And if you don't have the lights turned off, you're probably not gonna see a thing. <laughs> and with that said, it's time to grab your favorite beverage, sit back, relax, and enjoy this movie commentary of 47 meters down uncaged with a real life shark scientist. <laughs> So just before that intro title rolled up, we had this really quick scene here where a girl gets pushed into the pool. But I just noticed in the background, the school is called the Modine International School for Girls. <laughs> Definitely love this as a little reference to our happy, chappy, dodgy dive operator from the first film. Here's to you, Matthew Modine. Legend. When I wake up in the morning, love. Oh yeah, also, I forgot to say, sorry about the subtitles. I gotta get these films from somewhere, right? Definitely going to prison now for that. Look at this. So we get our first real bit of shark science here. And thankfully I can confirm to the best of my ability anyway, that that is a real great white shark tooth, which is pretty cool. Supposedly the dad who's like an archeologist found it during some cave diving he was doing on an underwater Mayan site. And you can now probably guess where the rest of this film is about to take place. <laughs> but before we get there, we've of course got this cringy friends enjoying an open top car montage, perfectly combined with an old school eighties tune. You can't help but smile. Two hours later. So the montage has moved from the car to a swimming montage and they've just been looping the first verse of the song over and over again. <laughs> I think they must have just bought the rights to use a really small section of the song instead of the full song. <laughs> so what they've actually happened upon here is known as a cenote pool, which is basically a sinkhole that's inland with fresh water towards the surface and salt water towards the bottom. Cenote, I believe, means sacred well, and the Mayans thought they were sacred places because they were great sources of water during droughts or dry periods. Wow. Some ancient history there on Chart Bites for you. That's pretty rare. Anyway, there's a bunch of dive equipment that's just been left here, stocked out with some pretty high-tech gear, including the classic full face mask like we saw in the first film. But strangely, there's no fins. <laughs> I have no idea how anyone is doing cave diving without any fins. <laughs> fins literally help you move through the water easily. And without them, you're gonna spend about 90% of your time just flailing around and end up using all your air within about five minutes. But if you wanna go diving without fins, that's your call. Years ago, I used to go all the time with dad, but I've never been in caves before. It's like riding a bike, right? I <laughs> right, okay. She says here that she's never dived caves before and the other girl is like, well, it's just like riding a bike. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> 
Cave diving is probably one of, if not the most dangerous form of recreational diving that you can do. There have been so many cases of people drowning on cave dives and you definitely have to do some real advanced training before being able to do those dives safely. But of course the girls decide to dive the caves anyway, <laughs> despite their inherent lack of dive training. And after some flailing around in the caves for a bit, they stumble upon this little guy. So this is a Mexican tetra, otherwise known as a blind cave fish. They are real fish that over loads of generations lost the use of their eyes because they simply didn't need them in those dark caves. But this tetra looks a lot bigger than what they usually are, which is probably around three or four inches long. It's hiding from us. Well, who says it's us it's hiding from? <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Here, fishy, fishy. No, Nicole, nice I wouldn't! To meet no! <laughs> Did that fish just scream at them? <laughs> Why on earth has this fish developed the ability to scream? <laughs> I'm pretty sure Johan Roberts, the director of this film, was asked about the screaming tetra in an interview that he did. And he was like, yeah, we needed the fish to do that in that moment. And then the interviewer said, do fish actually do that? And he just said, I don't know. <laughs> so i can tell you with 100 percent certainty here guys fish do not scream at humans <laughs> so the screaming tetra causes the girls to recoil and then that means the cave just collapses in on itself and then all the visibility is just completely gone to shit but then we get this shot here of one of the cave sharks cruising around in the murk behind the girl which is probably my favorite shot of the entire film because it's definitely pretty creepy. After some more flailing around in the dark, we finally get our first good look at these blind cave sharks. And boy, are they crap. <laughs> okay, I think it's about time we discuss the realism or lack thereof of blind cave great white sharks. First off, we've got to understand cave ecosystems. So these are environments that are particularly low in energy levels. There really isn't that much food for anything in there to eat, let alone a bunch of fully grown adult great white sharks. So any sharks that wound up in the cave hundreds of years ago would have likely died off pretty quickly. Then with the whole blind thing, there is no chance the sharks could have lived long enough in the caves to reproduce over multiple generations to give way to these mutations, i.e. the blindness. It's just not how natural selection and evolution works. That kind of change is going to be happening over really, really long periods of time. So the likelihood of a single great white shark wandering into these caves, having enough food to survive, reproduce with another great white shark, and then those offspring carry on reproducing until eventually they're blind is, well, just not likely at all. <laughs> to me, it looks like they've kind of based it off the actual blind cave fish, the Mexican tetras that do exist, which are of course completely different in every way possible to great white sharks. Just because these kind of mutations happen to one species doesn't mean that it's gonna happen to any species if you just chucked it into a cave system. <laughs> Glad I could clear that one up. <laughs> one of the archeologist boys is wandering around here and you can see that they've clearly been working on this section of the Mayan ruins for quite some time. They've got loads of bits of equipment all over the place, bits of rigging and stuff. But my question is, how have the sharks not got them before? Like, why did the sharks just suddenly start taking people down after the girls came in? Like, were they sleeping? Have they filled themselves up on giant Mexican tetras? <laughs> I guess we'll never know, but they're definitely not full anymore as this dude gets chowed down on pretty quickly. See ya, pal. We get a quick Jaws rip off here as this random guy's head pops out of a wall, which is very reminiscent of Ben Gardner's grotty head from Jaws. Now, I know some people don't like these little rip offs, but I am all for them. And I'd be happy if every shark film paid homage to Jaws, maybe in more subtle ways than this, but maybe like little Easter eggs that were harder to spot would be pretty great. I think it's really cool that what, nearly 50 years on, films are still paying tribute to the OG shark horror film. Eventually the girls find one of their dads. I'm just saying the girls here because it's so damn hard to keep track of who is who while they're all in their masks screaming. <laughs> anyway, they make it to a section of the cenote that the archeologists were using to access the ruins even though all their dive gear was at a different entrance to the ruins for some reason. <laughs> Ignoring that mini plot hole though, one of the girls in a desperate attempt to try and escape the sharks decides to go full every man for himself and scramble up that rope, which is definitely not strong enough to hold more than one person's weight at a time. <laughs> she ultimately proves to all those with somewhat of a moral compass that every man for himself is not a good strategy and karma hits her like a train as she plummets back into the water and is quickly devoured by two of the blind sharks. Interesting technique there though from the shark on the right, which decides to do a roll with the girl in its mouth. 
more reminiscent of the death roll from a crocodile than a great white shark. Whites tend to shake their heads back and forth when they're feeding as this is the best way for their serrated teeth to saw through flesh. Pretty grim, really, but I'm not sure I've ever seen a great white death rolling with its prey before. <laughs> if we stay here, we'll die. We're gonna watch each other's backs and we can survive this. Okay, girls, I believe in you. Oh, and the dad gets completely chomped. <laughs> <laughs> so that's in again is a definite rip off of Deep Blue Sea. You know, the Sam Jackson bit where he's like, we're going to pull together and find a way to get out of here. That is such a bad impression from me. <laughs> you know the bit I mean, though. Anyway, don't give a motivational speech during a sharky situation, guys, because it is a surefire way to get yourself eaten. After somehow inadvertently finding themselves in some kind of underwater whirlpool, created by currents from the sea, apparently. One of the girls starts getting ragged by one of the sharks. Luckily for her, it's only chomping on the big metal scuba tank that's on her back, so she's pretty safe, all things considered. Although, instead of waiting for the shark to eventually let go because it doesn't want to eat metal scuba tanks, she decides to take off her BCD and mask to swim away. And of course, she then drowns. That wasn't very clever, was it? So after crawling through a tiny gap in the rocks and dropping their scuba gear, our two remaining girls finally find their way out of the caves to safety, only to realize they're directly in the middle of a chum fest from a shark tour operating boat, surrounded by non-blind great white sharks. These guys really can't catch a break. <laughs> Somehow both of them get pulled down at the same time. I mean, presumably by a shark, but when they pop up here, there's not a scratch on either of them. <laughs> Also, what are you doing faffing around banging on the glass of the boat? Just swim up and get in the damn boat. <laughs> Again here, we can see somehow they've popped up away from the boat despite banging on the glass bottom literally seconds ago. And just as they're trying their best to clamber into the boat, one of the hungry great whites decides it would prefer to chow down on the bony human and not any of the lovely fishy chum that's in the surrounding water. <laughs> Then one of the girls decides to jump into the water with a flare gun, sort of reminiscing Blake Lively's flare gun scene from The Shallows, and slow-mo shoots the shark in the eye. <laughs> because we can't get enough of slow-mo in shark films, apparently. <laughs> but it does cause the shark to let go, which I think from a shark science perspective, it probably would do after being shot in the eye with a flaming bullet, to be fair. After getting to the surface, it's flare gun girl's turn for a shark chomping as she's taken down by another shark. Instead of relying on her stepsister to save her this time, she's got to do it all on her own. Fortunately though, in a high pressure panicked situation, she somehow remembers the great white shark tooth her dad gave her earlier in the film and decides to stab the shark repeatedly with the tooth. Now, personally, I don't really think that that tooth is going to be big enough or sharp enough to be piercing shark skin, but I've said before that in this kind of situation, you want to use anything that you have to hand to try and deter that shark. And if it's a blunt shark tooth, that's better than nothing. So. Good for her. It does the job eventually as the shark releases her and she heads for the boat, but not before one final shark tries to chomp on her not so tasty human leg, but somehow misses her. <laughs> Christ, it really kicked off there in those few final minutes. <laughs> I swear though, if we're about to get some dream sequence nonsense like we got in the first film, I am going to scream. <laughs> and there we go guys, that was 47 meters down uncaged. Well then. I'll be honest, I didn't really enjoy the film that much. I mean, I didn't really know what I expected, to be honest, because the first film was also pretty stupid. <laughs> I think for me, most of the film was just them scrambling around in the dark, and it was really difficult to tell who was who and what was what. At least it was only an hour and a half, which isn't really that big of a commitment. And for you guys watching at home, I'll do what it takes. Right, onto some ratings. For realism, it's gotta be pretty low for me. The idea of blind cave sharks in the context of this film anyway, just completely goes against all laws of evolution. And the CGI sharks, in my opinion, looked a bit naff. At least they had the right number of gill slits, I guess. Anyway, I think I'm gonna give it a four for realism. Then overall entertainment, it was okay. I just thought it was lacking a little bit and it didn't really grip me like previous shark films have gripped me in the past. So I think for overall entertainment, I'm again gonna give it a four. I think those ratings are probably pretty harsh but I'd say they're fair. What'd you make to those ratings then? What are you going to give the film out of 10? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, let me know in the comments. Also, please do keep suggesting shark films in the comments section for me. The ones I see cropping up the most are the ones I tend to do, so comment them below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bite channel below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.